Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to another episode of Bionicle Fan and Reviews, the show where I review the fan-created, canonized Bionicle models like the Kenohi Dragon right here. Now, what is the Kenohi Dragon? This was a Bionicle Rahi beast that was canonized from a competition held by LEGO all the way back in 2004, appearing first in the Bionicle Rahi Beast guidebook, which came out in 2005. The Kenohi Dragon depicts a fearsome Kimono Dragon-style Rahi that terrorized the city of Metronui and required the formation of the Toa Mangai to defeat it. Now this is a model I've been wanting to build for years and years, and finally, the instructions have been posted online, you can find them linked in the description below, and so, without further ado, let's jump right into our review of the Bionicle Kanohi Dragon. This is the Kenohi Dragon. It is one of the most fearsome Rahi in the Bionicle universe, one that terrorized the city of Metronui for years on end, causing the skies to blacken and soot to fall from the sky. It was only defeated by a massive team of Toamangai, who banded together to defeat the creature and drive it away from Metronui, including four separate Toa of Ice who are used to battle against its fiery powers. The Kenohi Dragon was made as part of the Rahi Building Contest back in 2004 to 2005, and was officially canonized by the Bionicle Rahi Beast Guidebook, which was a really cool way for kids to be able to let their creations enter the world of Bionicle and the storyline. Surprisingly enough, despite a lot of the Rahi mainly being confined to that one book, the Kenohi Dragon went on to reappear multiple times in the Bionicle storyline, even fighting the Vortex Mountain. Now, as a model, the Kenohi Dragon is a really interesting one, and what I will say is that it certainly is a model of its time. In fact, this review is going to have to be a pretty unique one compared to a lot of other reviews. Normally, we start off with posability and building techniques and whatnot, but there isn't really that much you can actually even do with the Kenohi Dragon, for better or for worse. As you can see, all the posability you can get is by kind of moving the feet around like this, and there's not a ton that you can even get with it. Obviously, you can kind of move the feet up and down, you can wiggle them back and forth, but there's so many different things that flop when you move around the model. It is very prone to pieces just falling off. Like, let me just go ahead and reattach that piece right there. But everything is held together in, honestly, a somewhat dubious manner. Now, do keep in mind that this was put together based on only basically one image. Only one image of this model does even exist online, and that is the image that was used for the Kenohi Dragon in the Rahi Guidebook. So, this could be filled with some inaccuracies based on how it was built. There certainly are some dubious, if not fully illegal, techniques being used in its construction, especially when it comes to the feet themselves. But I have to say, it is a very impressive model when fully done. It's just very awkward and unwieldy once you actually get a sign. Once you actually have it built. Now, the good thing about the Kenohi Dragon is that I will say that it looks pretty good. When you actually keep it aside and you don't try to articulate it that much, this looks very menacing, it feels very large, and it actually feels like a large style of creature. You've got the large Rahi-esque body, you have these very large feet and blades, it clearly is four feet, and you also can swing the tail back and forth on multiple different ball joints. Basically, the amount of articulation that you would expect to get out of something like this, it feels like a large-scale Komodo dragon or something like that that could exist in the real world. The interesting thing about the Kenohi Dragon is that it basically is kind of a statue. In fact, you can't even really move the head. There are ways that you can sort of move it, like you can kind of wiggle it up and down like this. Like this is pretty much all the articulation you're going to get out of the head. You can't even move it side to side because it basically is affixed on Technic beams. So this feels like more of a display model than an actual play model, especially because when you move the legs, it is very frustrating to move them because None of the legs are on friction joints, all of them are just kind of axles going through holes, so you have a ton of axles going through Technic holes, and they just kind of swing back and forth, so if you're not careful with it, the limbs will just kind of swing around. The only way to keep it in one fixed position is when you have the feet on the ground, and even then, I still feel like they're just bits and pieces of blades that aren't fully touching the ground whatsoever, and it's just kind of difficult to keep track of when you're trying to move it around or get it into any pose other than, well, just kind of sitting there. That being said though, despite posability being basically impossible, like you cannot get this into a pose other than this, I actually don't even mind it that much, whereas I probably would mind it on a different model. But for this model, I don't really even know what other poses I would want to get it in. I mean, maybe it would be cool to get it in like, 
a stepping forwards pose, so I guess you can do that. But I don't even really know what you'd want to do with a model like this, other than just kind of have it sit there, which is exactly what it does. It just kind of sits there and looks menacing. Now, in lore, the creature has been said to fly above the skies of Ta Metru, and it's said that it can, like, fire, smoke, and fire, and whatnot, which, obviously, I guess you kind of have to use your imagination here. I mean, the feet are just falling apart as I move them around. But, using your imagination, I think that this is a pretty good approximation of a dragon-like creature. It's not perfect, but it is what it is. Now, moving on to building techniques, honestly, I don't even really have that much to say about building techniques. It's weird. It's certainly really unique. It utilizes a ton of Bionicle Toamata torsos integrated on the inside from Onua's to Tahu's. Multiple copies of Tahu's, in fact, just scattered throughout the inside. And the rest of it is predominantly built out of long Technic beams. It seems that the builder basically took Amanas or maybe some of the other Bionicle Rahi available at the time and just kind of combined them together into one very long type of look and feel for this to just kind of create the illusion of having this Rahi-esque body. And for me, it definitely works as a 2001 to 2002 era Rahi because, again, it only is using pieces that were available at that time, so it feels very authentic to that era of Bionicle. The Kanohi Dragon is, of course, named because there are Kanohi masks adorned along its sides, so on either side they have some orange Bakaris, which are great for the color scheme. You also have alternate spots to put Kanohi, so you can put one right here if you want. So, for instance, if you wanted to take a mask that you had extra, place it over here, there is a mount for masks, if you just are careful with it, right there. So you can put masks on, like so, if you can get it to stick on. Uh, you obviously have two Tohunga heads where you can put masks on as well. So there are different places where you can put Kanohi around the Kanohi dragon, which makes total sense, because that's kind of its whole gimmick. You've got a Huna on the back here, which you can barely even notice until you turn it around, that there is actually a Huna on the back of the model itself. So there's actually a lot of interesting things going on with the overall design and aesthetic of this creature. You even have a Kanohi Krakon mounted on the top here, which is very, very interesting to see that piece being used. But overall, it is a pretty simple model, all things considered. There's a lot of complexity behind it, but once you peel back the layers, it is just a series of Technic limbs and Technic beams that are connected in 90 degree angles. Nothing super crazy going on, no wild building techniques, just interesting uses of ball joints to create mass onto the creature. I think the most interesting thing aesthetically and in terms of building techniques for me is the head. Now the head is actually pretty clever in the way it's done, and let me explain why. So, as you can see, you've got kind of the Komodo Dragon whiskers coming out in the form of Technic Tubes. I really like that parts usage, I think it's a really smart one to use for the Kanohi Dragon itself. You have the Borok eyes and a faceplate being used to create the eyes of the creature, which I think really work in its favor. You also have some Mata heads being used with some shields sticking out of the sides, which I also feel just make the shaping of the head very rounded and very customized, and I really love the usage of the Robo Rider's uh, head pieces right here because it almost looks like nostrils on the front of the dragon itself and a mouth on the bottom. It even has a dangling whisker in the form of the orange claws, almost like this is a wise or elder being, which is really, really cool and interesting, and I just like all of the different inclusions for the shaping to be done for the head itself. It's got ears or pointy horns on the back here. It's got a nice shaping with the Kanohi Huda Noble on the back to kind of curve it downwards onto the spine. It's just a really well done head, and I kind of wish that same design principle extended to the rest of the body, but as it is, the rest of the body feels fairly rectangular when I do have it in hands, and the head is definitely the most impressive part of the model to me. The other thing I find pretty interesting, at least shaping-wise, are the way the feet are done. As you can see, it is predominantly relying on Kohli staffs, as well as Kopaka skis to use as claws, and it's not a bad idea, but the only thing about it is that building techniques-wise, it is really floppy. So, as you can see, this thing will just flop back and forth, there's really no friction holding it in place. The Onua claw here can't really rest on the top without pushing this piece up, it has to rest on the bottom in between the claws like that, so that causes some asymmetry to it. I think it's a really cool idea to use the Coley Staves' feet, like these almost feel like large claws or hooves, but the way it's executed leaves a little bit to be desired, especially because they took a really cool idea, and I just feel like with modern parts today, somebody could really cook with these particular pieces being used as feet, but maybe this model was a little bit ahead of its time. 
Moving onwards though, I feel like that's almost all I have to say about the building techniques. I guess we haven't really talked much about the tail, but there also isn't much to say about the tail. What you see is what you get. It is just fully segmented with Rakshi leg elements. Nothing super crazy going on with the tail here. And yeah, you can articulate it and that's about it. Moving onwards though, I want to talk about believability in universe because out of all of the canon models that we've reviewed so far, I feel like this is one of the ones that is most believable in universe because, well, it has that bionicle aesthetic. To demonstrate this, I've brought alongside Toa Lee Khan, who was a 2004 bionicle set released around that time. Ignore the extra articulation I've given him, but basically that is your standard Toa Metru style build here, so that's what that looks like. And I've also brought alongside to Huddy a random Onumatoran, also from the Metru style of build. And you can see just how good these look next to each other. I definitely feel like the scaling works out very well. You have a monstrous dragon-like creature and you have a Toa there to battle it. I can definitely see this needing several Toa to take it down, especially a massive team, if it's really powerful and really lumbersome in the way it walks. Like this could be a really formidable opponent for the Toa. And it's just a lot of fun to imagine a lot of these battles within this scenario itself, which is really, really cool. Now, believability universe-wise, I feel like it almost is unfair to other models because since this model was built in 2004, it literally had to use only pieces available in that era. And I'm pretty sure that aside from a couple of joints, this pretty much only used 2001 to 2003 pieces. Like, it uses these, sure, and maybe a couple of other things here and there, but for the most part, this feels like a 2001 to 2003 Rocky just really, really amped up. And that's one of my favorite things about the model aesthetically speaking. And now I think it's time to move away and take a look at the overall points of this model. How would I rank it in terms of posability, building techniques, aesthetics, and believability in universe? Well, I'm going to be honest. Posability is like a two. And that is only because I can move the tail around and kind of wiggle the feet. It's not even that much of a knock against the creature because, as I said, it doesn't even look that bad when it's just standing here, but you cannot get this in two poses. You build it and it sits there on your shelf and that's pretty much it. Like, you can try to get it into separate poses and maybe some semblance of a walking pose, but you're never really going to achieve a full range of posability for a creature as big and unwieldy as this. So. A two for posability, building techniques, I really like the way the head is done. I'm actually a big fan of the head and I feel like that was what really drew me to this creature when I was building it, when I was looking at it as a kid. As a kid, I desperately wanted to build this. I remember poring over the Rahi guidebook and really wanting to put this bad boy together. So I guess that definitely adds on to it. Like the head is really good. The rest of the body is all right, especially for its time. And I do have to concede that yes, this was built by a kid. Like this was built by a child. So I'm not really expecting it to be super advanced TTV Canon contest, Artaka mock level quality. So building techniques, I'm gonna give like a four out of 10, just keeping in mind some of the other factors relating around its creation. And of course, trying to keep it good on a weighted scale. So I think a four out of 10 is pretty fair for this one. Aesthetics, aesthetics is actually a seven out of 10. I feel like when you step back and kind of ignore some of the flaws with the model, this looks like a big lizard, it looks like a big dragon, and it accomplishes what it's trying to do. Yes, when you zoom in closer, there's a lot of weird things going on, right? Like there's a lot of uncanny things and there's a lot of stuff where there's just parts that are used that I personally would not have used myself. But aesthetically speaking, I think this actually does accomplish the feeling of a kimono dragon, again it's the Kanohi dragon, so I guess that's really what they were going for, with just a few different pieces, especially limited to the technology of its time, the pieces of its era. And I'm really happy with that, so aesthetically speaking it's pretty good, and believability in universe is an easy 10 out of 10 because, again, it looks like other Rahi, it looks like a Bionicle character, it is built from existing Bionicle pieces, and that just works really, really well for me. And so, that about sums up my review of the Kanohi Dragon. Let me know down in the comments if you have managed to build this yourself. Big shout out to all of the incredible folks online who have actually managed to recreate this and make instructions for it and parts lists because that would have been impossible for me to make without the efforts of all of these talented folks. So big thank you for that and I hope you enjoyed our review of the Bionicle Kanohi Dragon.
All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at the incredible Bionicle Kanoki Dragon. This was, again, a model that I had wanted to build ever since I was a kid. I remember being in grade school, looking at the Rahi guidebook, wanting to put this together, and I finally have it fully assembled. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of the Kanoki Dragon model? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And how would you reimagine the model using modern building techniques today? That's always something I'm really curious about if anybody's revamped something like this. That's all for this review. Thank you so much for tuning in to Duck Breaks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.